So welcome to the team call, guys. I am so excited to see all your lovely faces this evening and we or today for you guys in Canada and the States. And we've got some new faces as well, which is amazing. And today um, we are going to be covering off overcoming objections and really kind of how to dig into that one. I know like a lot of you guys said you would want a call on that. So I am going to do a call on it. So I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully you can see that. Just bear with me. Here we go. So can you can you just nod if you can see that? Okay. Yeah, okay, good. So before we go into like the main part of the call, I just wanted to give you guys an update. Hopefully you guys have all been into your coach office. And for those of you coaches who are new on like the main screen, when you log into coach office, it will always give you your updates. So um, for us in the UK, we have Fruit Punch Energize, which is launching on the 27th of May. Um, and for Canada and America, you guys have that launching, um, but you have mixed berry instead. Um, for newer coaches, it's a pre-workout. It's got beta alanine in it. It's, I literally call it rocket fuel and it powers you through your workout and we're all pretty obsessed with it. So we cannot wait for that new flavor. So I just wanted to remind you guys about that. And what I've decided to do is that I'm going to talk about a book of the week. Um, and I posted this one in the team page earlier on this week. And it's one that some of you guys have read, I know, um, and have said like, oh, it's good. And, you know, a lot of you guys will sometimes say to me, ah, they keep saying no. And it makes me feel really awkward. And I don't want to keep, you know, asking people because they keep saying no. And I, you know, it's that natural human fear of rejection, failure, and all of the rest of it. And this book, I'm listening to it at the moment, and I actually haven't um, listened to it uh, before. And it's, sorry, I'm just letting someone else into the call. Uh, that's just, it talks about how no is the journey to yes, and that actually naturally as human beings, we always think that no is the opposite of yes. But actually, if you were to apply this to pretty much any business, somebody setting up their own business, no, you have to get many, many, many no's to get a yes. And so it's about kind of resetting your mindset in respect of how you feel when you get a no. And even for me, like, obviously, like I've been doing this for two years, it's really changed and shifted how I have my conversations. Like I don't even worry about a no. I don't even, it's just a process to getting a yes, because a no is always a not right now. And Ray Higdon, who was a really successful network marketer, who wrote this book with Richard Fenton and Andrew Waltz, also talks about how failure is the journey to success. And the people who have seen success have just been willing to fail more. And that is so true about this business. Like if I think about, you know, where I am and how many times I failed in order to get where I am, you know, I won't share with you guys all of those failures, all of those difficulties, because I lead the team. But just remember, there is nothing different from you or anybody else. It is just that if somebody else is seeing success, they have had more no's, and, which has got them more yeses, and they've had more failures, which has given them more success. And I absolutely loved it. And I think for a lot of you guys, it will, like even listening to that, like pennies dropping, I would strongly recommend, you know, it's not so much a personal development book for sort of growth of mind. It's more professional development, but also with mindset in mind. So I wanted to share that. And then a lot of you guys, I know I've been having little conversations with, I'm going to move you here, um, with you about this. Um, some of you guys have said you want to do this, but the Level Up Mentorship is going to start Monday, the 25th of May. And what I need to see from you guys, if you want to be in this Level Up Mentorship, is this week's business activity tracker completely completed and then next week's. Um, so if you want to kind of be considered for this, then you need to send those across along with your goals for the month, your year and your long-term vision. And you need to be an active Emerald coach or above, which means that you need to have um, your active coaches um, on each side and you yourself need to be active. And really this is like, I'm unbelievably excited about this group because I've I've learned so much from the Josh Coates Elite Push Group that I am going to be giving to you guys in that level up mentorship. And I can promise you, if I can see that you are showing up to do the work, 
and that you're an active Emerald coach or above, it is going to propel your business. And if you look at people like Donna, um, who has gone on to set up her own team page, she's been in a group like this, you know, where I've kind of pushed you guys a little bit and said, okay, right, you want to do this, you're going to need to do this. And, um, and I'm doing it a little bit differently this time. So I really am adding a level of accountability. I have a brand new tracking sheet that I'm going to ask all of you to use that enter into this. And it will be a three week long training. There will be three small group calls so once a week. Um, hold on, there's a notification here, someone's in the chat. Um, yeah, definitely. And, you know, I'll be perfectly honest, when I was um, an Emerald coach, it, w it was called the Diamond Push um, in Run Wild Hustle and Shine. And they said, we're doing this Diamond Push, you need to be an active Emerald. I wasn't an active Emerald at the time. And I'm, I just made the decision in my head that I was going to be in that group. And that was the group that made me do my first sneak peek. Okay, and we know the power of a sneak peek. Um, I've onboarded eight girls uh, in under 24 hours from my sneak peek. And I never would have done a sneak peek had I ever like not entered into one of these. Okay, so this needs to be on your agenda. Yes, you're going to feel uncomfortable. Yes, I'm going to ask you to be accountable to me. And really the way that this group will run is that I am going to be getting you to level up in terms of what you're sharing with me so that I can help you reach your goals. Because of course, I'm going to give you my time, but I need to know that I've got the committed people who really want this in this group. And it will be a case of kind of having conversations um, with you collectively, working out what you want training on and really getting you to kind of run your own sneak peeks, work out how that works, even talk through promoted posts, what's working right now, and really giving you some stuff, which I've just learned fresh off the press, which is going to propel your business. So you want to be in there. Um, you'll also get three one hour calls with me. So I'm to, to the people that get into that group who are active and will up, I'm going to be giving you um, one hour of my time for three weeks. And we'll just discuss whatever training needs it is that you need to really get you to level up. And, you know, if you're pushing for diamond, this is, this is where you need to be. If, without accountability, reaching those goals is very, very difficult because as humans, we work better when we've got someone holding us to account. So here we go, Success Club. Um, it's just amazing to see, what are we, the 17th of the month. Charlotte has already locked in Success Club. She is just bursting with enthusiasm about her cyber gym. She's absolutely loving it. And I know she has her sights set on Success Club 10. She's really, really just loving it and sharing her journey. And I would encourage you to like look at what she does in terms of how she talks about it, her enthusiasm, what she shares. If you're lost and you want to look at a newer coach doing well, it will be good to look at Charlotte's stories. She's very, very good at them. And Donna, um, she's not here because she's doing her sneak peek. She's, you know, getting people set up for her mentorship. But I mean, Donna's really coming into her own. As we know, she set up her own team page. It's honestly amazing to watch. And it brings tears to my eyes to see somebody 15 months in doing what I did and being able to leave their full-time career that they don't want to do anymore and just build this. So I'm really over the moon for Donna. And we've got Tasha, Taylor, Jackie, Louise, and Paige at Success Club too. And remember guys, if you're not on this board, remember that you have almost, that you're just halfway through the month. You have time and it can all change literally in a heartbeat. Let me just scroll on to the next page. So, before we talk about overcoming objections, and the reason why we're talking about mindset is that the two are inextricably linked. They are just, if you believe in what you are doing and you believe that what you have to offer is amazing, you are going to attract those people who want to do this with you and you're going to find it a lot easier to overcome their objections. So the more that you believe um, in what you do, the more that the products and the programs you are going to see far greater success with it. And, and it's so, so true. And this is why I say like always like to newer coaches or people who are just getting set up. Hold on one second. Sorry. Guy, where are you? I'm trying to do a presentation.
sorry, my son is screaming my name at the top of his voice. Um, <laughs> so do you believe that what you have to offer is amazing? Do you really believe in it? Are you getting the results? And I want you to ask yourself that question right now. Like, do you really believe in what you're doing? Have you really seen the results? And are you sharing it? Because an objection is based on a lack of knowledge, which is limiting beliefs. So when somebody says, uh, I can't do that because I don't have the time. I can't do that because I don't have the money. It's because they have limiting beliefs. They don't believe in it. They haven't seen the value in it. And so they're giving you an objection, which is a limiting belief. And it's our job as coaches to help them work through those. But if we are stopping at, you know, you say, hey, would you like to learn more about my virtual gym or, you know, your coach info session? And they say, no, thanks. And you say, okay, no worries. You have not done your job as a coach. 80% of the time people will say to me, I don't want to learn more. I'm not interested. And I will always follow that with, do you mind me asking why it wasn't of interest? Yeah. It is our job as a coach to work out why it's not of interest to them. Remember, you're the professional. You know what's on the other side. These people cannot see that and they haven't seen the value. So they don't know what's there. And as a result, if you let them stop that conversation at no thanks, we have not done our job. We have not worked out why they're not interested. And if we don't know why they're not interested, then we don't know whether or not we do have the solution for them that may well be exactly what they need, but they just don't know it, okay? And that's so linked to how you position yourself, your social media positioning. If people don't know who you are, if you don't let people in, if you're not on your story sharing a bit about your life and just sharing, like, what are you enjoying about it? And it doesn't need to be, um, hold on one second. Yeah, I'll get to that in a second, Elena, because on my next slide, actually. Um, so, you know, if if you aren't on your stories sharing what it's doing for you and why you believe in it in a in a kind of curiosity marketing kind of way. So, you know, after I do my workout, I'll talk about how amazing I feel, how energized I feel, how amazing it is to have a community and that I wouldn't show up for that workout if my girls didn't show up and things like that. Or you'll notice when I have my superfood, if you look at my stories, I'm talking about I had such chronic acne before I started um, doing these um, programs and having the superfood and it's cracked like 10 years of the worst confidence of my life. Like I would literally like hide myself inside because I, my acne was so bad and it's cured that. So I like, you better bet my belief in this is so solid that when someone gives me an objection, I can overcome it because I'm confident and I will ask questions. So do they know who you are? Because if they know who you are and the benefits that you're seeing, then when you ask them, do you want to learn more? They're going to be much more likely to say yes to start with. But if they say no, thanks, you can ask them why, and then you can isolate their objection. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. Hold on. So show the product works and why, which is what I've just said. So like if you're a newer coach or you're trying to build trust with your audience, the best way that you are going to build trust and they're going to see that these products work is to share a transformation photo. And it might be that you're not looking to lose weight and it might be that you just want to tone up, or it might even be that you want to gain weight. Okay. These programs allow us to do any one of those things. So let's think about the population. 100% of that population is covered by that statement. I want to lose weight. I want to tone up or I want to gain weight that there's not going to be any one more option than those three. Okay. So we know we hold the solution in that respect. Share other people's transformation photos. Make sure one in nine of your photos has a transformation. And if you're not getting a transformation as a coach, you need to dig into why am I not getting that transformation? Because people aren't going to trust you if you don't trust yourself with it, if you're not seeing the results, which means that when you get an objection, you're not going to feel confident in overcoming it and you're not going to be kind of confident with it because you haven't really seen your own results. So share in your stories what it's done for you, which is what I spoke about a second ago. And like, you know, even on the transformation Tuesday, you can do a little scroll of people's transformation photos. You can always go on the team page and say, Hey guys, <clears throat> I'm doing my transformation Tuesday. Can you just share all your pictures below? You know, um, particularly if you're a newer coach, you don't have your own transformation yet. It doesn't mean you couldn't share other people's. Okay. 
So get to know them first. And this is where like, it is so, so crucial to have a connection because again, if we haven't connected with the person we're talking to, we're not going to be able to overcome objection because their objection is actually going to be, I don't know who the heck you are. I haven't connected with you and I'm just not interested because I don't know who you are. Okay. So you need to feel connected to them and they need to feel connected to you. So, you know, that's why we sort of message people and we ask them if they're on a fitness journey or how long they've been on the fitness journey. We strike up conversation um, and then, you know, once we've invited them, whether it's to a boot camp or if it's to the coaching, ask questions to find out their struggles to work out where the value is for them. So like, what is it with their fitness journey before that, that hasn't gone right for them? Where did they struggle? Was it that they weren't motivated? Was it that they, their nutrition was all off? Like, what was it? Because I can promise you, if we can isolate where they are not interested, aside from saying, I've not got time, and I'll come on to that in a second. If we can isolate and work out what their struggle is, we pretty much have the solution for any of their fitness and health struggles, don't we? Because if their struggle is nutrition, we know we've got the most unbelievable nutrition program, which works for people, whether or not they're trying to like compete for a bodybuilding competition, or, you know, they're trying to lose a lot of weight, or if they're just trying to tone up and maintain, we know it works for everybody. So we should be confident that and if their struggles motivation, well, geez, this is why you need this group. We have the most incredible accountability group. And if it wasn't the accountability group, honestly, I would never be getting the results I am now. Like share what it's doing for you confidently. And they're, they're, then their objections, they're, they're going to see, oh, okay, I've got an objection. I've got um, a concern. And actually, this is why it's going to work for me, because this is going to help me with my struggle, right? They don't know the power of what we have to offer. And don't jump to a solution before you build a connection. I think this is the kind of biggest danger as a newer coach. We sort of think, oh, well, you know, I just want to get them to see if they'll join my boot camp and, uh, you know, oh, okay, well, it must be that they are maybe trying to lose weight or we just make an assumption like, oh, do you, do you struggle with, um, you know, like it, for me, like as a newer coach, probably be like, oh, do you have sugar cravings too, right? No, we don't know what their problem is. Like that's my problem, but what's their problem? So I think sometimes we can make the assumption their struggle is the same as ours, which it might be, but it is our job to ask them where their struggles are. You know, do you want to learn more? No, I'm not interested. Do you mind me asking why? Well, actually, I've tried, um, I've tried doing stuff like this before and I never got the results because I just online stuff doesn't work for me. I never get the results. Okay, why is that? Well, I wasn't really motivated to do it or I just needed the accountability. There's your answer, right? You've got that, okay? Well, we've got something that makes us completely unique. We have this incredible motivational accountability group. This is why you need to do it. Um, and remember, like, and this is what I always, you know, even as a newer coach, I remember being so uncomfortable about posting. And I remember Janine actually saying, because Janine's sort of a year further down the track than me, and she said, it's not about... Um, us like when we feel uncomfortable about posting and we're worried about what people think how dare we make it about us it's about the people who actually really need this solution in their lives and they they're looking for it but they just don't know and if we hold back from sharing what it is we do or how passionate we are about something because we're worried about what other people think then we're not worried about their lives. We're worried about ours. We're not able to help people if we don't at least unveil what it's doing for us and let people in and be vulnerable. And a, a book I'm just going to talk about, talking about vulnerability, some of you guys have heard me talking about it, but Brene Brown, The Power of Vulnerability is the most incredible book. And it talks about how we've been kind of cultured and socialized to believe that we shouldn't share our vulnerabilities, but it's our biggest strength to build connection. And of course, our business is all about connection remotely. And it's not about our goal, it's about, about theirs. And I think, again, this is something that, you know, this, this took a lot of time for me, I'll be perfectly honest. And I think as a newer coach, this can be something, you know, well, I want to hit success club, I want to hit success club, but it's not about our goal, it's about theirs. And if we make our focus when we're having this conversation about looking into them, what is their struggle? What do they need? We're going to be far more likely to reach our goal anyway, but it is about them, not us. So what are their objections so this is obviously really important because we can't overcome objections if we don't know what they are which is what i was talking about earlier on like are we asking them why it's not of interest are we asking them why was it you felt you didn't have the time um you know if someone says they don't have the money um i will often say 
I completely understand when I enrolled, I actually paid for this on a credit card and I didn't have any way of making the money back, but I just trusted my gut and I pay 10 times what I have right now to be where I am now. Um, and so I know how you feel, but what I found is it was the best decision I ever, ever made. It was the best investment I ever made. And without question, I'd pay 10 times if I were to do it again. So what do they need? Where do they want to go? Um, hold on one second. Yeah. So I'm going to come on to the objections in a second, guys, so just bear with me. But where they want to go is so important because again, like if we can't, if we haven't first worked out where they want to go, we can't then overcome their objection. Like if we, if we've got all the facts, then it's far easier for us to help with their objection and work out why it's their objection because we've got the facts. And does what we have provide them with the solution that they're looking for? So when we're going to talk about, I think the objections is actually on the next slide. So does the solution generate an emotion? Like, are they, um, have you genuinely connected with them in an environment that they are emotionally connected to you? Like what emotion are they feeling when they're talking to you? Like what has been their struggle? Is it that they've, you know, they failed and they're, they're afraid of failing? You know, we really need to dig into this stuff. And you live in the results of what you're selling. So this is what I was saying earlier on. If you, if you aren't getting the results for, from this program, when you get objections, you won't be able to overcome them because you won't be able to isolate the objection because you won't believe in the value. And if you are believing in the value, then when you get confronted with objections, you will just be able to overcome them. So to Charlotte's question about not having the money, that's exactly what I, um, it's exactly what I say, what I said earlier. So I can't afford it. I know exactly how you feel. Feel felt found. Okay, write that down. Feel felt found. I know exactly how you feel. I felt the same. I honestly couldn't afford it. I paid on a credit card. I didn't know how I was going to make the investment back, but I just trusted my gut. And what I found is it was the best decision I've ever made. I invested in my health, which was the best investment I could have ever made. And I would pay 10 times what I have to be where I am right now. And that might not be yours, but really think about it, guys. Like if people are saying they can't afford it, maybe that was your struggle when you started. And what did you do? Like, why did you decide to do it? So feel felt found. I know how you feel. I felt exactly the same, but I really wanted to focus on my health and wellness. I knew I needed to invest in it. So I saved, you know, maybe you stop buying coffees. Maybe you stop, you know, there's something these people can stop doing, right? There's always a tiny bit of available income for the most part. So, you know, maybe it's, they don't get their treats. I don't know, whatever it might be, but you will probably have a story, particularly if your response was, I can't afford it when you started. And why was it? that you decided that you could afford it. And what have you found now, right? You're still here, you're still active, you're still having your superfood. So what have you found? Yeah, feel felt found. I know how you feel. I felt exactly the same. I had to pay for it on a credit card. I didn't know how I was gonna make it back, but I really had reached the point where I needed to work on my health and wellness. I needed to invest in myself. And what I have found is it was the single best decision I ever made. And for me, that's true. It was the single best decision I've ever, ever made. And I would genuinely pay 10 times what I have to be where I am now. So like that might not be your story. And I, I would say like, if you don't connect with any of that, definitely don't say it. But I suspect you guys had this objection when you started. So what did you feel? And how can you relate to them? Feel felt found. I don't have time. Again, why was it you felt you don't have time? Yeah, ask, ask them more questions. When you ask questions, you are taking the control and you are the professional. If you end up having questions put on you, you don't have the control. So why was it you felt you didn't have the time? Again, like I felt the same when I started. I was working three jobs. I had a son going to preschool two mornings a week and my husband worked, he was out of the house for 13 hours a day. But I found the time, I made the time because I needed to invest in my health. I needed to make it a priority and I got out of bed half an hour earlier. Um, what if that, yeah, what if they ghost you? Do you continue asking other questions? No, if they ghost me, they're like, you can't really have a dialogue. So I will leave that for a bit. And if they continue to watch my stories and like my stuff and follow me, 
then, um, then I'll go into it. I could never inspire anyone. Like this would be an objection from somebody looking at the coaching. Okay, cool. Well, I definitely felt like that when I was a new coach and I definitely don't feel like that any anymore. So I, I know exactly how you feel. Like I genuinely had no idea how I would ever inspire anybody. I, I just had my son. I was really out of shape. I was worried about what everybody would think. But what I found is this journey as a coach has provided me with so much personal mindset growth that I feel so incredible with this. And I, I've loved the, the, the kind of transformation of mind and body that I can inspire people now and it feels amazing, but I certainly didn't feel like that in the beginning. I don't have room in my house. You know, you can relate to that. And we know these beach body workouts do not take much room at all. You know, could you work outside? I hate vegetables. Well, that's just somebody's like mindset, isn't it? That's obvious. You know, they just don't want to focus on their health. I'm not a morning person. Yeah, I know. I'm not a morning person either, but you can set your alarm, leave it outside the front door, or you could get them to read the miracle morning. But I think this is the most important point. Do you see what I'm saying? Like every single one of these, I confront in the face of confidence and knowing that we have the best possible solution out there so that when I get these, it doesn't even it's something that I will always try to overcome the objection because it is the single best thing I've ever done. And so I need to share that with people because if we don't share our experience and we don't share how passionate we are and what it's done, then, then people aren't, they're not going to, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to buy into anything that we're saying. If we don't overcome their objections with like real strong belief in what we're doing, knowing full well that it's the single best thing we've done or that we're really on this journey and we're really confident on it. If we don't confidently try to overcome their objections, they are gonna be like, no thanks. And that's why the mindset work is so important because the mindset work is what's gonna give you the ability to overcome these objections. Is it when you get these objections, you're not confident in how to handle them because perhaps you don't fully believe in the solution. You haven't passionately shared the results Maybe you're worried about what people think. You know, this is just so, so crucial. Um, Ariana, I somewhat go to Paige because I did not believe it. She messaged me a long time after and offered me a lot of information and I'm here. Yeah, there you go. So like, and that's Ariana's brand new today, you know, and, and we see that time and time again, like some of my amazing coaches have ghosted me. Um, and this, like, if you feel you're pushy, you need to do mindset work on why that's not true. Like genuinely, we are not being pushy unless we don't believe in what we're doing. Like I never believe I'm pushy. I'm like, I know I have the best solution out there. I absolutely love it. And if you don't love it, fine, but I love it and I'm gonna share it and I'm not being pushy because I know that I can help you and I know when I've got you the other side, you're gonna say to me, Izzy, thank you so much for telling me how amazing it was and telling me I needed to do this and I needed to get enrolled right away because I feel incredible. And that confidence means that when I get that, I never feel pushy because I know the solution is far more valuable than pretty much any other crap out there that there is available for people to do. And I, I can confidently say that I never feel pushy because I know what we have to offer is so incredible. Um, yeah, Elaine ghosted me for sure. <laughs> it took nearly a year. <laughs> I love it. See, like it's good to share that. Like, don't ever give up because people ghost us. Hold on, what have we got here? Yeah, I think Amy ghosted me too. I, I've had a lot of ghosters. You see, like, no or ghosting doesn't doesn't put me off. I know what we have to offer is incredible, and I'm gonna continue knocking on your door if you're liking my stuff and you're watching my stories, you better bet I'm gonna reach out to you. And I have people like, I don't know whether it's so much, but customers, a lot of customers in, in my virtual gyms will say, Izzy, thank you so much for not giving up on me. They're watching me. I damn well know I've got the solution and I'm damn confident I can help you. So I'm, I'm never gonna feel pushy. Um, and this is again, like, do you see how the objections is inextricably linked to your mindset? Um, the hardest sale you will ever make is to yourself. Yeah. Do you believe in this? Do you believe in yourself? Have you done that mindset work? Are you at that place where no matter what anyone says, you're like, okay, cool. I've got it because I know what I have to offer is incredible. And you're, you better join me now. My virtual gem starting like my group is going, you're going to love it. I know I've got the solution. As long as you know what their objection is, 
yeah, if you know that their objection is time or they don't like vegetables or they've tried every fitness thing in the book and it hasn't worked, we should confidently be like, okay, cool. But I know I've got the solution and I know I'm going to get you to find the time. Like I have people who start and they're like, I don't have time. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's get on a call. We're going to chat through how this is going to work. In fact, all of my new um, inherited customers that get sent to me, they get an email with my um, tips on how to get started with home workouts. And one of them is get your workout, even sleep with your workout clothes on. I don't care if that helps you get up in the morning, go for it. Um, fold up your clothes at the end of your bed, leave your alarm outside your door. Do you see when someone says they don't have the time, you're like, okay, cool. I'm going to help you. You're going to get up half an hour earlier. And here's why. And you know, confidently that they're not going to hate you for it because about a week later after they've had their superfood, they've been doing their workouts. They've been part of the community. They're going to be like, thank you so much for telling me that I had the time because damn, I had the time and I feel, I feel better than I've ever felt. Work on your own belief and you will overcome them. Yeah. So I always say, speak with conviction, speaking with conviction, whether or not you're voice clipping or messaging in text, if you believe in that thing and your, your heart of hearts and you're sick and tired of you, like being a bit namby pamby because you're too scared of what their response might be. Like literally, if you believe in it, get over it. Like, go for it. Just share it unashamedly. Geez, what we have to offer is incredible. But if that is your block, it's your mindset. Your mindset will get in the way of you being able to overcome these objections every single time. And any one objection, I overcome with my story. Yeah, and that's so true. Like, I, whenever they've, they've got an objection, I always try to relate it to me. And where I could have said I don't have time because I was working three jobs and I had an 18 month year old and I had a husband out at work 13 hours a day. And I made this business work in that, you know? So any objection, like money, again, that was a struggle. Vegetables, probably not so much my struggle. Um, but you know, we, and, and if you don't have a story related to one of those objections, message the thread, say, hey, I've got this objection. Was, that, was this anybody's objection when they, when they started? Because I can bet you it probably was somebody's or someone's concern. Um, and the final thing is if you struggle i'm just going to move you guys here if you struggle to overcome objections you're not working hard enough on yourself and that's pretty blunt but that's the takeaway like genuinely and i i've been at that place where overcoming objections i didn't even over, try to overcome them someone say no i'm not interested okay don't worry don't worry, I was too worried about what people would think about me. No, I'm not worried about what people think about me. Like, I'm going to passionately share what this is because if I don't, they're not going to know why I'm passionate about it. And if I'm not sharing my passion and I'm not telling them, like, I know this is going to work for you, you better bet they're not going to believe it's going to work for them. So, you know, is it your self-belief and your confidence? What kind of personal development book do you need? Like, look into it, take responsibility for that because the most frustrating thing in the world to watch and I'm that person too. Like I used to really lack confidence is to do all of that business activity tracker. You guys even like going to the level up mentorship, do it all and then not be able to see success. And it's mindset. The mindset needs work underneath. So make sure you make that time. Don't ever skip that mindset work. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share with objections, the other thing that you can do if someone says, you know, I don't have time, isolate their objection, or I don't have money. Aside from the money, is anything else holding you back? Aside from the time, is anything else holding you back? Aside from the lack of space, is anything else holding you back? Because once you've isolated that, you can explain why that's not true, right? So aside from the space, is anything else holding you back? No, well, actually, you can do this workout in a six foot by three, four foot space, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and I would encourage you to try to overcome objections in a voice clip. Yeah, challenge yourself. It might be cr super cringy to start with. But again, like failure to success, no to yes. And that's why that network marketing book, Go For No Book, I think is just so amazing. Um, yeah, Amy, I have, I'm so grateful for Izzy not giving up. We have a lot to give. And this is why when people give me no and, and like, oh, no thanks, Izzy. I'm like, okay, cool. Why? Okay, sorry if you think I'm being nosy, but I really want to know why, because I know I've got the best solution out there. Um, if you connect with someone, they say not right now, but they join somewhere else, but still watch your stories. Is it? Yes, definitely. Definitely, without question. And if they say not right now, say, okay, why is now not, not a good time? Do you mind me asking? Just be confident. 
yeah, if we're like, okay, cool, they're going to be like, okay, cool, that person's, you know, obviously not that passionate about it if they're not going to ask more questions. Ask more questions, yeah? Um, if they've joined with someone else, I would say, no, I had another beach body. Sarah, I don't understand that question, sorry. Do you want to I was ask? talking to Elaine. I was oh, oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? If they've joined with someone else, what's the point in continuing with them? They've joined with someone else, so you might as well. Do you know what I mean? She means somewhere else, like not with Beachbody. Well, I, I got it as someone else. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I was saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't still stay connected with them because there's people, as I say, that connected tried to connect with me before Donna but I felt more connected with Donna than what I did with the others. So now they've unfollowed me, I've unfollowed them. Do you know what I mean? I'm quite happy about that. Does that make sense? They're not in our team, so. Does that make sense, Elaine? <laughs> but I think Elaine was, do you mean like Shreddy or something? Your, your volume's not on, hun. <laughs> on me. Do you mean Beachbody or do you mean no, they've, I've connected with somebody and they want to do it. Yeah, great, great, great. And the next minute you see them join like with Shreddy or... Okay. You know, and then you're then, just like, do I keep in touch? But then they're still watching your stories and they're yeah. still commenting on your pictures. Yeah. So is it like, okay. Maybe they're not sure. Still interested. Okay. You need to put them in a follow up for two weeks. Because again, yeah. people, we know they're not getting the community. Mm. Yeah, I do keep in touch with them and I do keep yeah. like... She will join, but she doesn't know that she's. But it's a case of got... share why you know what we have to offer is better. Like I know Shreddy, yeah, cool. I know it's cheaper, but do you get all of this? Like this, no, you, you know, don't. Just yeah. With it. yeah, just try it. You know, you're here because you love it, right? Yeah, yeah. It took me a while to believe it, but I do. <laughs> I do. I'm not going anywhere. So if yeah. you don't share your passion and belief with people, they're just, they're not going to see it and they'll move on. They won't, they won't buy it, right? They won't think that it's offering all that. Um, okay, cool. Hold on one second. I'm just going to stop screen sharing. Has anyone got any questions? Like, please ask questions because if you've got like, and I know we said we'd workshop like, um, specific you know like conversations you're having so has anyone got any conversations they want to share mm. i get a lot of i'm doing my own thing so maybe i need to elaborate is that what is that because yeah. oh no um it's, yeah um yeah i'm doing my own thing at the moment i would like to do my own workouts yeah what and i was like well, what workouts are they and you know that's the biggest thing i do get at the moment do my own thing and like, what's that? So. So that's like a real conversation starter for me at the moment. Like I'll ask people like how long they've been on their fitness journey. They'll tell me, then I'll have a conversation. I'll be like, what kind of workouts are you enjoying? You know, they're doing their own thing. So like ask questions. Cause they're having a conversation with you, Elaine, because they want to have a conversation with you. They're interested in some way. So ask those questions. Yeah, I will do. I'm gonna start doing that. Cause they're always like, oh, okay. I get a lot of doing my own thing. I'm happy with what I'm doing. But then I watch, they still watch me and then you see them complaining about certain things and then I'm like, I think, right, okay, I'm going to go in again. And then, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. So maybe I just say, no, this is what you need. But I don't want to be like... Like, I can see you're still watching me. Was something piquing your interest? Like, yeah, I know you said you're not interested, but I can see you're keeping up with what I'm doing. Do you want me to explain how it works? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Because I, I, I just think that... The, some of them, I think of some of them I think you could do really well, but I need to make them believe it as much as I believe in it, it yeah. as well. That's my thing. Yes, that's on my, that's my Amy, thing. would you guys keep inviting another network? Yes, I invite Arbon. I invite girls from Arbon, Herbal Life all the time. I had a girl, I've had at least two or three girls join from Arbon into the boot camp, and SJ came from Arbon. So absolutely and yeah we do and if you speak to sj about what arbon offers arbon she's she's always said to me arbon you have to buy three products to get the same as what shakeology has in it so really? i know already without question we have the best products out there uh, okay mm, okay that's but that's personal preference you'll hear like 
Kate Schultz, for example, she'll never approach a network marketer. But then there was a national wake up call the other day. I don't know whether you guys are watching this absolutely amazing coach and her network marketing company went down and Heather Shipley had been in conversation with her all through her network marketing business. Lo and behold, it went down. Heather Shipley enrolled the most insane coach because she, she built another company. So I'm always connecting. I'm not like, you know, hey, like I think you should learn more about this when it's very clear there like with Arbonne. But I'll strike up conversation. Um, and sometimes if I've striked up a conversation, I get on well with them, I'll say, like, I know you're, you know, you're probably happy with what you're doing, but do you want to learn more about what I do? Do you want to take a look at my info session? Don't worry, I'm not. I totally understand. And, and that's a really respectful way of asking them. That's not being like, hey, like, do you want to learn more? And not even respecting the fact that they're, you know, I think if we're respectful for what they do when we ask the question, but it's never received badly. That's true. To be honest, when you approached me, I was in beach, I was doing a body shop. So that's a case of that. And I was in mind and I was like, happy that. And then you approached me and I was like, this is what I want you to do. So maybe it's the alarm bells ringing, you never know. Would you- I'm speaking, to, no. Sorry. Sorry. I'm speaking to a lot of network marketers in my day job when I'm networking. Actually, network marketers move, can move around quite a lot. If they've, if they've started on a journey and they suddenly you know, don't believe in the product as well, or they've got, to, you know, they've got to a point where they haven't been successful, but they want a network market, but they don't believe in that product, you know, they may believe in this product. So it's they're definitely always worth going after, I think. Yeah, keep my options open. And also they know about network marketing, they get it. They get it, you don't have to teach them about that. They're already up to speed with that. It's just uh, making them believe in the product. And yeah, I've done the Arbon ones where you have to do three different things. You have to get like a, the probiotics, you have to get the green and you have to get the shakes as well. And it's so much better Shakeology, it's so much better. And I think we've got a powerful community, haven't we? Because I think within this group, there will be people that have done other things and there's a reason why you're here. So what are, you know, can we work out what those, you know, like with Arbon, that's something when I'm talking to Arbon girls, they're like, oh, our, our like product is amazing. Like you should try our vegan. I'm like, I'm good. I know that our, our Shakeology has got everything in it that you have to buy three of your products for. So I'm, I'm good, but thank you. You know, so yeah. and then they start watching you because they're like, "Oh, okay, that's interesting." And you're like, oh. "Yeah." I had got an Arbonne lady that sent me a voicemail the other day and asked me if I wanted to join. I was like, "No, I'm quite alright. Good, thank you." And she was like, "Oh, no worries, you know, because you said you're so exciting, vivacious." And I was like, "Oh, thank you." But and she's now she's still watching me, and I was like, "Well, it's fine. I mean, she's just, you know, she, she might, you know, just uh, might, you know, she might switch one day. I don't know, but she was nice because she was like, oh no, I want you my team. But no, I'm okay, thanks. Yeah. I'm good. It was nice. I think just asking more questions, just being curious, because it, it is. is. We're interested in them, which people like. People always like to be asked questions. Yeah, I do. It's like it's good to get out and ask because, to be honest, we were asked. And we, if we weren't asked, we wouldn't be here. So it's the same. It's a full circle, isn't yeah. it? So that's how I see it. Yeah, and there's a lot. You know, network marketers are open to the general model, which is amazing. Mm. Um, good. Yeah, any other with yes. that, with the um, Arbonne stuff, obviously they have their own shapes. Would you offer them? just the workout platform you know like just the bod no i don't because i believe that our solution is better so i just say hey just enroll with the challenge pack like i know you get your product with arbon but try it for, for two weeks if you don't like it it's fine and and sj was the same sj was like no i'm good i've got my arbon protein i was like try it try it for two weeks and she has the shakeology now so yeah, that's true she could yeah. you know definitely Again, if they're interested, the challenge pack's going to get them in. They're close to it because they're happy with what they've got, yet they don't know what we have to offer and they haven't tried it. So why don't you just try it? And if you don't like it, you've got a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you can send it back. Yeah, okay. I, was on a different, I was on a different shake diet, Isogenics, when it contacted me. And I remember you saying, oh, you've got to try the Shakeology. I was like, oh, no, I've got a, I've got a box of Isogenics in the cupboard. And you said to me, oh, well, you know, your first month, you get it anyway, so just try it. And I tried it going from one to the other. And literally within the first month, I was like, right, sign me up. I'm getting, the, I'm getting another month. Because, you know, so if you say that as well, you know, you get the first, you get a back one month's worth of shakes in the first month. Just try it and see how you get on. That, that's, how, that's how you got me on it, Izzy. Yeah. Mm. And the thing is, you can drink the whole bag and take it back if you don't like it. <laughs> yeah. That's just true. That's a good thing to say, actually. I forget about the 30-day Yeah. 
I can't imagine drinking the whole bag and then being like, I don't believe in this. I think it's a good Oh thing. gosh, I've got a, <laughs> oh <bag>. yeah. <laughs> I've got, a, oh, I've got a few people. A few. Don't read the show, college. Okay, you're not going to get your goals then, are you? Yeah. Charlotte, did you have a question? No. Good. You're sitting there in your dressing gown. <laughs> She's getting annoyed with me. I keep calling her out. Any more questions? Yeah, but just, I think the main takeaway is if you're not even getting to people's objections, why? Ask more questions. And number two, like, are you really working on that? If, it, if you're not asking these questions, is it lack of confidence? And are you doing the personal development you need that's going to get you to that place? Are you, are you pushing yourself out of your comfort zone? Are you getting in your stories more? Are you putting that camera on your face? Even if you don't feel confident, even if you're shaking. Like as a new coach, I remember doing those first videos on my Instagram stories, which is where people are going to connect with you, which is how you're going to be able to overcome their objections because they're going to have built connection, even if you're not in their DMs, right? Because they're, they're building a connection with your face and your stories. And I remember the first time I did that story and I was physically shaking and I messaged my old work colleague and I was like, Rosie, oh my God, can you look at my stories? I've just done the story and I was shaking and I feel sick. And she was like, it's great. And I can still remember that feeling now. And I think this is the key, right? If you, if you aren't ever willing to push yourself out of that comfort zone and show more of you and share more of why this is working for you and share more of why you're passionate about it in your stories, then when you get into the DMs and you have the conversations and someone gives you the objection and you try to overcome it, they're not really going to buy it because they're not going to have seen where it's providing you with value in your life because you're not sharing it. And it doesn't mean every single one of your stories should be about Beachbody. It really shouldn't. You should let them into all areas of your life so they actually think you're a real human too. Um, but just letting them in is going to help you build that connection so that when you start to have those conversations, it's just a lot more, they trust you more. Izzy, can I just ask, when you get an objection, when they say, oh, I don't have that much money right now, or I can't afford that at the minute, I've got this, this and this going on, and then obviously I'm going to like try your approach, being like, well, I was the same, and then it's the best investment I've ever made. Do you send that in another voice note? If you've already been voice noting, do you send that in another voice note, or do you send it in a message? How have they messaged you? That I've never had a voice note back. <laughs> I just get messages back. I voice note them and then they message feel, back. Carla. I think it depends how you feel. Yeah. Like, how would you feel most confident dealing with that objection? I would be inclined to voice mm. clip, given that you voice clip. Because if, if you're someone that's voice clipped someone and they give you an objection and then you go, <laughs> they're going to be like, oh, she's got scared. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. if, if it's all been voiced and then the objection comes and you just type out a reply, it's even something I call myself out on. Like if someone says, no, I'm not interested and or whatever, and I've been voice clipping and then I just suddenly go into text. How does that, how is that received? Like probably not that well. Okay. Yeah. And, and like to start with again, Charlotte, it's probably going to sound awful and it's going to sound uncomfortable and then you'll do a few and it will be better. Okay. Uh, thank you. Of course. Sarah, six months ago, I wouldn't even do selfies, but I now have done a month load of videos. To yeah. And that's it. Like what Sarah said is so true. Like, I know you guys probably see me in my videos and think, oh, I couldn't do that many videos. Like I was that person, but I just would literally feel physically sick and almost just like shove myself in front of the camera. And I shoved myself in front of the camera because I just got sick of loving what I was doing. Like genuinely thinking it was the best thing ever because I lost my mum and it helped me through that trauma and I would not be here living the tale if I was not doing this. So you better bet I, I'm unbelievably passionate about it. I'm not saying it has to be a story, but what's your story? Cause you're here cause you love it. And I got sick of having conversations and not getting over the line with anybody because they hadn't connected with me because actually I couldn't get over myself and I couldn't put myself in my videos. And that kind of get over yourself love mentality really like will do a lot for you. Um, and, and everybody, every single person on this planet, no matter how many followers they've got or how confident they are, they have started exactly where you are. If you're not going in those stories and doing those videos. And I do kind of believe in the fake it till you make it like just 
feel uncomfortable, feel sick, do it anyway, like feign that confidence. And, and ultimately over the passage of three, four, five days, maybe four weeks, it will become confidence and you'll amaze yourself. And then you'll be like, damn, I should have done that months ago. I should have ripped that bandaid off months ago. Um, I think a horsefly bit me. My leg is so itchy. Um, any other questions or comments? No. Okay. Well, should we do a boomerang? Of course. Um, well, I hope that's been helpful. I'm going to stop recording now.